Midjourney's new website is now open to anyone who has created over 1,000 images, and if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that's probably you. But how do you access it? Well, let me show you. Over on the Midjourney Discord, you need to go into a public room and hit forward slash info. This could be a support room or a general creation channel, and you're going to type in forward slash info. This will bring up your lifetime usage, and if you've made over 1,000 images, you should see some new channels available to you, like alpha testing or maybe some super user clubs. Now that you've synced your progress with Midjourney, you can go to the alpha website and start creating there. You can find it at alpha.midjourney.com. It's going to ask you to sign in with your Discord account. And once you do that, you'll be greeted with the new homepage. The very first thing I want to show you that you might be interested in is this little button down here. You might want to change it from light mode to dark mode. This is how I prefer it at least. In this video, I'll be going over every possible feature on this website, so I'll leave some timestamps in the description below. We'll get to this explore page after, but let's just jump right into creating an image. Instead of the prompt box on Discord being at the bottom, we now have it up top. You can click up here and start imagining. Let's say I want to see a faded magazine photograph of a vintage retro futuristic sports car. Now I believe you can write your parameters the same as you would on Discord, but the big change to your workflow is going to come from this drop down menu over here. This brings up basically all of the parameters you're going to need. We can change the image size and aspect ratio right here, portrait, square, landscape, but what's really cool is this little slider we have available. You can make it landscape two by one. If you wanted it wider than 2 by 1, you can just manually type in the aspect ratio like you would on Discord. Dash dash AR 5 by 1. We'll make it in 16 by 9. Over here on the right, you have your aesthetic options. That includes stylization, weirdness, and variety, but that's just the chaos value in case you're not aware. And I do want to point out that all of this is subject to change. This website is just in alpha right now. They're going to take our feedback and make adjustments accordingly. One of the big biggest pieces of feedback is only being able to adjust this value by 100 at the moment. That's not going to work for a lot of people. So I'm actually going to go up to the prompt box and type in dash dash s40. That's the value I'm looking for. We'll leave the weirdness at zero and I don't want my chaos to be at 10. So I'll go up to the top and adjust it to six. You can choose your model over here, standard or raw, but also the version 5.2, 5.15. 5. In fact, all the way back to version one. And at the bottom, you have the three Niji models. We'll leave it at six. You can choose whether you want to run it in relax mode, fast mode, or turbo. I don't think turbo is available in version six right now, but you get the point. And you can run it with stealth on or off. I pay for stealth, so I'd like it on. Now, when we hit enter, it's going to send it to the create page over here. While this is generating, I want to point out that this create page will be filled in with your Discord images. As in, these right here, I created these on Discord, and they will populate on this create page. However, the reverse is not true. Anything you create on the website will not show up on Discord. Just wanted to let you know about that. And if you're new here, my name is Nolan. It's really my goal to make learning AI as straightforward as possible. If you've learned something new so far, I could really use your help. Hit that like button below so we can share it with more people. Thanks. All right, our prompt is done generating. To be honest, I don't like these that much, but you know, that's okay. Now what you'll notice on the website is that your grid will already be split up into four pictures. So from here, I can vary subtle or very strong on each of the generations. And that's kind of cool, that'll save you some time. But if you want to see more of your options, you can click on one of the images and you'll be presented with all of these. Again, we have very subtle and strong. We have our two upscales, subtle and creative. Here we can remix using subtle and strong. Right away, you see how all of these options are presented in a way more accessible format versus Discord. And that's one of the reasons you might want to be creating on the website. We have our pan options down here, followed by zoom, rerunning the prompt, vary by region, which is in painting. And then you can also just use this prompt again, but you can also use this image as an image prompt with just the click of this button. It'll fill it in right here. 
That is pretty powerful. In painting works the exact same as it did on Discord. We have our rectangle selection tool and our lasso selection tool. I do want to show you one thing that's pretty cool and a little different. If you click on change AR, and this is basically the custom zoom option, you'll be able to use this slider to adjust the ratio. But what's really cool is that you can change the placement of the picture. Let's say we want to start it at the end and fill in everything on the right, or maybe we want to start it on the right and fill in everything on the left. Or or you can keep it in the middle and fill in the left and right like that's really powerful same thing goes with vertical i don't know why you would ever want to do this but you can you know what let's try it and see what it creates while we're here let me show you one other thing you might want to know about prompting if i wrote my prompt with permutations like a blue red yellow polka dot dress and i hit enter it's just going to make all three of those options it's not going to ask me for confirmation like if i tried this on discord it would ask if i wanted to imagine those three prompts on the website if you write a permutation and hit enter it's just going to start creating them that might be an adjustment you're going to need to be aware of in your workflow. If you wrote a permutation incorrectly, you don't get the option to second guess yourself. Oh, and here's what changing that aspect ratio on the car created. We kept it in the middle and we extended the frame up and down. These are pretty cool. I think I like number three here a lot. I know I showed you that you can click here and use this picture as an image prompt, but you can also just click on a picture and drag it into the prompt box. That's pretty cool. And what else is cool is that if you click this plus button right here, you get access to every single image prompt you've ever used. You can click and drag or simply just click and boom, it's there for you. You can also choose a file from your computer or drop a file right here. And what's even better in my opinion is that this is synced to Discord. Meaning if you upload a picture on Discord for image prompting, it will appear here. Like that is a great quality of life improvement. And you know what? Let's, let's blend these images together. Together, see what it creates. All right, these aren't bad. But now let's switch from creating to viewing your gallery. Your gallery can be found under this archive tab over here. And it's probably going to look something like this but you have a lot more options available to you. Over here on the right, you're gonna see this organize button. Click on that and it's gonna drop down a few more options. The first one I think you're gonna to wanna to focus on is the view options tab. Click on this. Now you'll be able to adjust the layout and image size. First you have your image size and this just changes the size of the little thumbnail you see. When it's on small, you'll be able to see way more pictures from your gallery. Maybe you like it on medium, maybe you wanna see them larger. But the real setting you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is this layout button. When it's on square, all of these images will be cropped to a square so that they're neatly aligned like this. However, I'm not really a fan of that. I prefer to see it in full, which means I'll see the exact aspect ratios that these pictures were made from. Here's our 16 by 9, here's our 3 by 4, down here's our 5 by 1, and I think just seeing the full image is way easier on my brain. Okay, there's your viewing options, but what about your filters? If you click this tab, you'll have access to all of these options. First, you can sort by your ratings. If you happen to rate your images, you can sort by things you've liked, you can sort by only images you haven't rated, or you can search by images that you have hidden, which isn't the same as deleting, but these do remove the images from your gallery so that you don't have to be bothered by them. As for type, you can search by just your upscales, or maybe just your grids, or maybe you want to do both. Further down, you can select just specific image sizes. Like if I only wanted to see portrait images, these are the ones that would show up. If I want to adjust landscapes, this is what I would see. What's pretty cool is that you can select any version. So maybe I only want to see version 4 landscape images. And here they are. You can also sort by published or unpublished. And the difference between those is that if you have the stealth plan, everything you make is unpublished by default. You can then go into each picture and publish them. That's just a little extra option. Furthermore, you can filter by tiled or style raw. I think these options are amazing and everything is so fast. And the last thing you're going to want to pay attention to here is the ability to create smart folders. You can click down here at create folder and there are two types of folders you can make. The first one is just very basic. It's a drag and drop folder. So maybe I'll call it clothing. I can hit create folder and now I can click any image that has clothing in it and I can drag it into the clothing folder. Makes sense, right? However, I can also create a smart folder. So you know what? Let's call this one sports car. I'm going to click this box down here for smart folder. And this means that it will automatically add any images that match my search terms. But please note, you can't manually add or remove images from smart folders. That's the key difference. And then down here, I'm just going to type in sports car. 
Obviously you can expand this and add a bunch of different terms, but for now we're just going to keep it simple like this. I'll hit create folder and now when I click on the sports car folder, every single image I've ever made that used the word sports car shows up right here. Like, isn't, isn't that amazing? Do you see how fast this is? Like, that is incredible. And that's one of the main reasons you might want to be creating on the Midjourney website rather than on Discord. There's a couple more things I want to show you, though. Beside the Organize tab, we also have the Search tab. This will let you search any of your prompts from your entire gallery. So if I typed in neon, I'm going to get access to every single image I've ever made with the word neon in it. Isn't that so cool? But I use this image a lot and scrolling back through the dates, well, this might take forever. Right now we're at the 27th of December, 2023, but look that they added this timeline scrubber over here on the right side. So we're at December 27th. I can just scroll down and look at all of the dates I use the word neon. So let's go back to May 5th, 2023. And here's what was created. Isn't that amazing? It even shows you a marker for 2023, so we can go back to September 27th, 2022. And this is what I created on that day. Like, isn't that so good? Okay, you've seen how to create images, you've seen how to look through your gallery, but now let's take a look at the homepage of Midjourney. It's called the Explore page, and you can view images by random, the hottest images, the top images, or just images that you have personally liked. Now for random, you can go over here on the right side and click randomize to see a whole new set of random images. If you find one that you wanna know more about, you can click on it and you'll be able to see the prompt and how it was made. Also the person who made it. You can then click on their name and see everything they've made, so that's pretty cool. You can also use their image as an image prompt or use their prompt directly, but that's not all. You can actually like this image and leave a heart on it. That will send it to your likes and the more likes a picture gets, we'll send it to the hot page. The more likes a picture gets here, we'll put it into the top page. And then from here, you can sort by the top of the day, the week. Oh, this one's really cool. I like this too. Also that one. And the top of the month. Like, look how amazing that is. This one too. And interacting with these images is so seamless. You can just drag and drop right into the prompt box. I'm gonna say the genie of the black hole. I don't really know what this is gonna create. We'll hit enter. And then you can find your generation over here in the create tab. Oh, these are really cool. I like number one a lot. But still on the explore page, you can search through every mid journey image ever created. Like if I wanna see what people are doing with Batman, I can see every Batman image ever created. Thumbs up indeed. And now we're moving on to the very last thing that I think you should know about the mid journey website. And maybe this will be the most important thing to you. Down here on the left side, you can click on the rate images tab, and this will bring up two options for you. Your job is to select the image you like better. You can make the selection with your mouse, or you can use the one and two keys on your keyboard for quick selection. You can press three if you wanna skip a certain pair. And the reason you might wanna make these selections is because the top 2000 people who rate images over one day will receive one free GPU fast hour. That's basically 60 free prompts you get to run in mid journey. And you can do this every single day. Rating images helps the system and in return, they offer fast hours. It's a win-win situation. Don't forget about this on the website. That is everything I think you should know about the alpha. Don't forget that this is all subject to change, especially the design and layout of where all the buttons are. Let me know if I missed anything, and if you want some more tips about how to prompt in version 6 of Midjourney, you can check out this video here. I hope you're doing well, take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.